Hi everyone, welcome to Go Local Live. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. Thanks for tuning in this Friday afternoon for our last and final segment. There is a big battle, not just here in Rhode Island, across the country, libraries versus big publishing. Now I've got Julie Holden here with the Rhode Island Library Association to tell us a little bit about this. You had a press conference this week yes. on it. Um, uh, has the potential to impact a lot of people because one popular publisher in particular is trying to limit the licenses to libraries for new ebooks, and uh, this is seen as incredibly problematic. So on November 1st, Macmillan Publishing um, decided to limit um, all library systems to only one copy of a new ebook for the first eight weeks of publication. Um, after the eight weeks, we could purchase more copies, um, but we just thought that this was unsustainable. We want to be able to provide as many copies as we want. We want to be able to buy as many copies as we want without restriction. So the Rhode Island Library Association, the American Library Association started a campaign to try to build awareness, to try to fight this um, embargo. Um, so that's what we're, we were talking about this week. So let's talk a little bit. I mean, some folks are probably more familiar with, the, especially the ebook side of libraries in particular. You know, in the uh, old days, so to speak, you still have paper copies. Mm -hmm. You get paper, you know, several copies of them, and they go into circulation. Explain the process for folks who might not understand when you, as a okay. librarian, deal with. Okay, there's a new release coming out and looking at how to get that into the library system and into the hands of people who want it from an e-copy standpoint. So for print books, we follow the first sale doctrine. Once you purchase a book or a movie, you own it, you can lend it out. That's how libraries have operated for hundreds of years. With the e-version, it used to be that way when e-books first started becoming available to us, but the publishers in the last year or two decided to go to a licensing model, an expiration model, so we purchase an e-book and we don't own it. Um, it expires after 12, 24 months or a certain number of checkouts, depending on the publisher. Um, so now we're struggling to keep up with demand. Everyone wants ebooks. It's easy to use. You use them on your phone, your tablet, your iPad, any e reader. Um, and so now we're paying high prices for a license that we don't get to keep. So it's very different from a print book. So this is very much you know, the Wild West right now in terms of libraries and being able to provide. Um, that service to the community. That's mm -hmm. always what libraries, public libraries, were intended to do. Obviously, publishers are feeling the strain of ebooks and sort of the mass dissemination of um, books to consumers and to the customers. And it's, you know, libraries serve as a civic role in the community mm -hmm. and being able to let everyone have an equal access to fiction and nonfiction. You've had conversations with, you know, the delegation about this. I mean, this mm -hmm. is something that. Um, you know, you're really looking to try to get some firepower behind to say this is really hurtful to the public library system. So Congressman David Cicilline has been working um, on antitrust issues at the national level. Um, we held a roundtable with him on February 3rd, explained the library piece. He's very interested. Um, you know, he's taking a look at big publishing along with some of the other big tech companies to see if our antitrust laws need to be updated. Um, we want to provide um, ebooks to everyone who wants them. Um, we want to provide information to the public. Um, we don't want to be restricted. We don't want the high prices. We don't want the expiration dates. So something has to change in this ecosystem. Is this very much David and Goliath? Like, you know, yeah. the, the libraries versus big publishing? I mean, this, 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 the scale seems a little, a little tough. So that's why we're reaching out to Congress. Um, we're reaching out to the Attorney General um, in Rhode Island to see if he can help us out. Um, with any legal side, um, you know, we're, we're doing PR campaigns, we're letting the public know so that they can contact um, authors, publishers, um, you know, we're, we filed legislation, uh, Senator Mark McKinney filed a bill about how ebooks can be sold in Rhode Island, so that's getting some play. Um, we just want to, we want big publishing to understand where we're coming from. And this is, I'm sure, important as sort of a bellwether, if you will, because as you said, the first publisher that really decided to try to change the playing field in such a dramatic mm -hmm. fashion. I mean, how this plays out, I'm sure, will you know have a rippling effect, um, you know, for other publishers, and this this really sets the stage. Yeah, I mean, the other publishers are taking a wait and see approach. Um, they have not done an embargo, um, although there's one audiobook publisher, Blackstone. Blackstone Audiobooks signed an exclusive deal with Audible.com and has shut libraries out of purchasing new audiobooks for 90 days. So that's another embargo that we're fighting on a smaller scale. So we don't want any more embargoes. We're trying to stop this from happening. 
Um, again, you know, as you try to coalesce that support within mm -hmm. the community, clearly a lot of library goers. Uh, but for the general public who may or may not utilize the library to the extent that some others do, I mean, is this, uh, you know, this is this just not a or kind of, you know, a basic right, a, a citizen's right is kind of being infringed upon here. So is that sort of part of your appeal as well? Like right. this, you're kind of trampling on the little guy here. <laughs> right. Well, um, Rhode Island libraries are part of the Constitution in Rhode Island. Um, the access to, to everything that the public libraries provide is supposed to be upheld in the Constitution and the General Assembly. So we are trying to, I mean, we have a lot of library users in Rhode Island. They're fired up about this. Um, they can't stand the long waiting lists. They, they don't understand why they have to wait months and months and months to get an e-book. Yep. It seems ridiculous. Um, they understand waiting for a print copy, but they don't understand waiting for an e-copy. And we have a lot of readers in Rhode Island. Again, the landscape shifting so dramatically on any number of fronts, but mm -hmm. obviously the publishing front, with everything with being accessible online, but again, they are holding on to that with such tight reins um, as obviously there's major financial implications. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that people can contact you, contact mm -hmm. the Library Association. Again, wanting to learn more information. I'm assuming you'll also have more uh, awareness raising events moving forward. Too. Sure. In the next couple of weeks, we're launching a new web page on the Rhode Island Library Association site. But for now, um, people can go to the American Library Associ Association ebooksforall.org site. It explains everything. There's a petition they can sign. Um, get informed about the issue. So we'll, Very good. you'll hear more from us. And we'll inform you, the public here, uh, when you check back in. And we have the article up on this. But of course, thank you for watching us. And Julie, thank you for joining us on this important issue. We'll have more news, politics, lifestyle, sports for you throughout the weekend. But this is it for live here in downtown Providence. Thank you for watching. Wish everyone a great weekend. We'll see you soon. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nadel.